Yo, yo. What's up, man? How are you? Good, how are you? Drama. Rob. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for doing this. Of course, thank Welcome you. Welcome to the Mentor Monday Couch. It feels good. You know, every week we try to split it up to a different location, but I think um, I'm going to try to just lock down one here pretty soon. So sure. for this Monday, this is the Mentor Monday Couch. Feels good. Um, so you know the drill. Uh, this is just 30 minutes or so to kind of ask me anything that's on your mind. Sure. I am by no means... A genius or a, somebody that knows it all, but you know, I, I just want to kind of give you any feedback that I've learned or anything that I know that could help you along your way. Sure. Um, so literally, I'm an open book. You can ask me anything. But cool. first, start with just sort of give me a little quick rundown of like who you are, where you're from, and what you're working sure. on. So from Philadelphia, I'm doing a project where I'm spending one hour with 10,000 different people mm -hmm. just to get to know them, see what comes of opening doors for no particular reason, mm -hmm. and just to kind of learn about their stories. Yeah. So typically I meet with someone for an hour, take a picture with them, post what I remember of their story uh -huh. to Instagram, and it's kind of like a way of highlighting the ordinary people around us. Yeah, yeah. that's so cool. Where'd you yeah. come up with that concept? Um, so I graduated from Penn State in 2013, mm -hmm. and knew a bunch of people when I was a student there, and once I graduated, I missed that feeling of familiarity. Yeah. So this was like partly my attempt at recapturing that and partly my attempt at creating my own path in life. Yeah. Yeah. And how many people have you met with so far? I have met 1,917 people. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So and, and that's over how long of a period? I started November of 2015. So, wow. and then met 100 people in the first eight months was doing tech sales, was laid off of my job because the company I worked for was bought out. Yeah. And then decided to take this project full time. And it's been just over two years that I've been doing it full time. And then when do you forecast being done? I think it's gonna take probably 10 more years. Really? Yeah, but. How old are you? 27. You got time. Yeah, so I don't know. I think in my mind, the way the project works, like I'll get to a point of monetization or just surviving off yeah. of the project yeah and then from there it's just putting in the time yeah and where are you finding people uh instagram so like is there any re requirements or like how do you choose it's it's just straight up like first come first serve yeah um which is crazy because recently i met with matt from yes theory yeah and he posted about it that blew it up a little bit and then i was meeting one of their friends at their house and Amar posted about it to their accounts story. Yeah. And that blew it up even more. So I'm still, that was June 6th, and I'm still trying to go through those messages because I want to answer everyone. But now it's like they're coming in from all over the world. Yeah. So. That's so cool. Yeah. What so, a cool concept. Yeah, it's been sweet. Yeah. And that's like, I'm sitting here with you today because of a girl that I met from Temple University. Really? And then it's just. What like, was the connection? I forget how she found me. Does she know Ryan or something? No, so she, it goes back, like, she was a brand ambassador for this uh, teacher company called Serengeti. Uh-huh. Um, and so I met with some of these brand ambassadors, and then their CEO, Ryan Westberg, mm -hmm. he reached out to me and was like, hey man, I love what you're working on, would love to be part of it. So I met with him, I met Matt, Matt posted about it, I met Akil Wade, who is... Yeah. Ryan's partner in Bava Media. Got it. Met Got with it. Ryan, and then Ryan set this up. Do I count as one of the 10,000? Yeah. Sick. Yeah. I'm in there, man. I'm in early. Yeah. 1900 and like 22. Yeah. It's so funny. Like, it is early, but for me, it's like three years into it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, you're right. It's crazy. But even... But do you think that the speed will like... Like, were you meeting with someone every day? Yeah. So... And sometimes, obviously, multiple. Right. So my schedule out here, I'll meet people noon, two, four, and six mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. except for the weekends. When I was in Philly, I was meeting five people a day because I would just ride my bike around and like lock it up to a stop sign, pop in a shop, meet with someone, leave an hour in between to write about them, drive to the next spot. Yeah. And that's what I do out here. So I meet four people a day and I think that's the upper limit yeah. out here just because... 
doing that, I'll leave my place at 1045 and I'll get back at like 830. Yeah. So it's a pretty full day just with four people. That's great. Yeah. Um, okay. What, is there anything I can give you some input on? Sure. Is there anything I can yeah. like, anything I can help with? Because this is really cool. And yeah. regardless of this content stuff, like this is cool. Right. And any, any time along the way that anything comes up or, or anything that I could help you with, mm -hmm. don't ever hesitate to let me know because this is a really cool thing. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm interested because I know you're working on your own things as well. Yeah. And I think, so my project right now is at a point where it's getting big enough to where I can start to take on partnerships yeah. and sponsorships. And ultimately the business strategy is like have what I'm doing be so interesting that I'm able to have backers yeah. and have that allow me to do it full time. Yeah. Um, but I've noticed like, I feel like you always have to trade a little bit of authenticity for some mm -hmm. type of monetization. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering how you, like how you handled that with your own yeah. ventures and yeah. like, have you seen yourself give up authenticity or if not, how have you accomplished that? Yep, so my, my biggest advice on that is you have to really make sure that you like get super, super clear on what you're comfortable with and where your priorities lie, right? Because sure. everyone, you don't have to tell anyone, but everyone has a line where the money's worth it and the money's not worth it, sure. right? And you, there's literally like this scale on a spectrum of like authenticity, money. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is very likely on something like this that you could get some money and keep 100% of your authenticity. Sure. But I think obviously as you get into bigger dollars, people are gonna want more involvement, they're gonna have their ideas, and rarely do you find a partner that truly just gets it or that lets you do your thing. Yeah. You know, they always wanna have their hand in it, they want you right. to say, check out American Express, and this is my new friend Steven. You know right. what I mean, like it's always gonna get a little weird. Sure. But I think if you're clear on like, what that dollar amount is, if you just want enough money to pay your bills while you do this project, you mm -hmm. could probably get away with keeping all your authenticity. Sure. If you want to start to make some money and buy some nice stuff and have a good life, then you might have to give up a little bit more. I, it's kind of like as you go, you can judge that. Mm -hmm. With mine, I will say this. I've always been really fortunate that I actually started Young and Reckless. One of the biggest motivators in that for me was because I had went to other brands to try to get endorsement deals okay. and I just wasn't big enough to get any amount of money worth it mm -hmm. that I wasn't going to have to do really stupid stuff. Sure. And like there was a time when I was paid 500 bucks a month by Echo and I had to give them like five minutes of skateboard footage every month and it was the wackest thing I've ever done, right? Yeah. But you know, I'm, I'm 20 years old, 19 years old and it was like, oh, I could use the 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it was from enough of those things that I was like, well, I'm gonna start my own thing and I started a couple other things that didn't work. Sure. Um, but this one worked and I was really fortunate in that fact that it worked really well and ever since then I've been able to survive on that and I control it 100%. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have outside interests, I don't have investors, I don't have board members, I don't have any of that. Right. So I've been able to have freedom to kind of do whatever I want. Now, where that has come into my life is, you know, let's say I'm shipping uh, a bunch of shirts to PacSun and they want me to travel around and do autograph signings at their stores sure. and it's a little cheesy and it's not exactly how I would like to represent the brand but in those moments I had to weigh what was more important to right. me and there were multiple times when I had really cheesy banners out front of a PacSun store in Fort Lauderdale doing an autograph signing mm -hmm. because I knew that that was the price I had to pay to get my clothing into 600 doors. And I knew that the other 599 doors wouldn't see that. You know, you kind of weigh the risk with the benefit. Sure. And even with my content now, I'm able as of yet to just produce content just for the sake of producing content and just for engaging with people and just for trying to do fun stuff. Right. I haven't had to monetize yet or do anything like that. Um, that day will come because obviously I don't want to do it for free forever. Sure. And, and that's what I'll do is I'll, I'll weigh the same thing. But I'm pretty clear now after all these years of where my line is mm -hmm. between authenticity or cool factor and money. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you just, it's all about, it's all about being honest with yourself, you know? And one thing I wouldn't hesitate for, for you to do is to look around at brands that could fit mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. uh, but may not know it and hit them up yeah. and say, hey, this is a project I'm doing. This is a way that I think we could integrate into what I'm doing that I would love and I think would be really effective. Right. And you might be surprised at the action you get there right. and you getting able to curate how it goes yourself because a lot of these brands where a lot of young people go wrong is they think that these brands have everything just figured out and they think like, well, if they wanted me, they would reach out to me. Sure. And in all actuality, 99.9% .9 of people at brands don't know what the hell they're doing. They're right. just, you know what I mean? Like yeah. Sally and marketing happen to say, hey, look at this guy doing this 10,000 thing. And mm -hmm. somebody's like, okay, cool. And now she's a hero. Right. But you can just as well approach brands that you think would fit in a capacity that you think they would fit and say, hey man, this is something cool, this is what I'd be willing to do, mm -hmm. just thought we should meet, you know? Sure. So that's what I, I would do a combo of those two things. Right, yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah, it's funny The guys before asked me like, what's the biggest thing I've learned from doing this? Mm -hmm. And I said, is that no one knows what they're doing. Yeah. Like everyone is an amateur when it comes to reaching the yeah. next step. The day I learned that, life seems so much easier. Yeah. You know, because I like, especially coming from like small town Ohio to LA, I just felt like, man, I am out of my element. Sure. And like everyone here is so much smarter than me, more successful, everything. Mm -hmm. And there was a day, like not that long ago, a few years ago, when I just realized like everyone's just going for it and giving it their best shot and yeah. like hoping for a lottery win. And it just made me so much more assertive. Because you realize you can be like, hey man, he would be a cool project for us. And right. here's what it would look like. And here's where we can make money. And here's where there's some action. And you get so much more traction than you think you ever would just thinking that everyone already has a plan. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's huge. That's a huge, like, discovery. Sure. You know? Yeah, it's been awesome. Um, when you felt like you were on your come up, mm -hmm. I guess, mm -hmm. how did you go about valuing yourself? Like, not how much did you value yourself, but what, what went through your mind to process, like, okay, I'm doing this, this, and this, so... Mm -hmm. I should be worth this much to a brand or whatever. Got it, got it. Um, I think the best way for you is to try to poke around and see what, I know there's no one similar, like doing a similar project, sure. but there are people doing, getting similar amounts of attention on similar platforms. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you look around and kind of see what's going on out there in that world, right. you can start to draw your price from that, right? Mm -hmm. So you always, like I said, there, there's not similar creative, but there are numbers you can use. Sure. And, and just judge it by that and start. And you really don't know what you're worth until you start getting paid That's true. anything. It's the same way like people always talk about when new companies are raising money. If I started a company that hasn't sold one single product yet, but I have a great idea and a great infrastructure, and I say, you know what, my company's worth five million bucks and I'm gonna raise $200,000 at a five million dollar valuation, the moment I can get one person to give me money, my company's worth five, five million dollars now. True. You know, and it's kind of a little, you don't know until you start charging and if you get, you could get $1,000 for a post or you could get $10,000 for a post, but the moment you get 10,000, now you're worth 10,000. Right. You know, the moment you get 1,000, you're only worth 1,000. Right. So I would look around at what similar people are doing on similar platforms and then make up numbers, Yeah, you know? And just don't ever shoot too, don't ever, you're better off shooting too low than too high, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Too low, you still get money, and you can always go up. You can always revise upwards. Sure. You shoot too high, you, you run the risk of meeting some great people and some great potential partners, scaring them out of the room, and then you're left, you know, thinking you're super valuable, but you have right. no money, you know? Right. So I would just do that, start to kind of play around, make up some numbers, see what people will pay you, and you'll learn from, you know, the first six months, you might be like, man, I'm not getting paid what I deserve. Mm -hmm. But two years from now, when everything's great and you're killing it and you're getting paid more than the average guy, you're gonna laugh at the new guy that's like, man, how much do I get paid? You're gonna be like, oh man, I remember when I had to go through that. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think so much of it is trial and error, mm -hmm. you know? So just make up numbers and go for it. And that's not the most sound advice, but right. man, that's, yeah. there's a lot of that going on. Yeah. It makes sense. I feel like it's naive to think that you can get to the right answer on the first try. You can't, and this is a market that nobody knows anything about. You know, like there's right. not set rates. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's like a SAG sanctioned, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so nobody knows. Everyone's just going for it and pitching dollar amounts and pitching, you know, whatever. And, and even when we do posts or anything like that with influencers for clothes, 
there's just no amount. And somebody might send us an amount, and we might say, oh, we can only do half that. Right. And they're like, okay, well, cool. Hopefully we can build a relationship. Right. You know, and it's like, okay, great. So the number was half. You know, like, you yeah. don't know. But, um, yeah, it's so new. And everyone, including the brands, are trying to figure it out that you just got to learn from trying it, Yeah. you know? Yeah, I think one of the the other things that I was just thinking about prior to coming here is when you have so many people trying to get your attention, like how do you sift through who is valuable and mm-hmm. who is not? Mm-hmm. And not that I'm at that point now, but just having my account blow up those couple times, mm-hmm. like I just got an overwhelming amount of messages. Yep. And it's like, I'm sitting at home for five hours a day just messaging people back, yeah. which is fine. And I like that I like being that close to the project. Yeah. But I know in the future, if there are more tipping points, like the more my project gets out, the more influx I'm gonna have of people wanting to meet. Yeah. And then it's just like, how do you yep. navigate that and yep. how this do you do that with yourself? This is what I would do is I'm such a fan of like getting so clear on what you want in all aspects of this thing. Sure. You know, and like I think that's where so many people go wrong is like you have a cool idea and then your cool idea gets a little bit of traction and then all of a sudden guy from Yes Theory posts it and before you know it, Mm -hmm. you have all good news and all good problems, too many people, right? That's a great thing, too much attention. But sometimes people don't take the time to carve out exactly what their goals are and you end up not being able to fully utilize all of this attention. Mm -hmm. And attention is the most valuable thing ever right now and that's what you wanna do. So I would, any question that you have, like who do I respond to or who do I interview or who do I take money from or whatever? Sure. Try to answer those questions mm-hmm. and in yourself and try to say, you know, I want to have X amount of interviews with X amount of people done by X time. I'd like to make X amount of dollars. I want just enough to pay my bills or I want this. Here's my goal. And then you know exact, only respond to people that fit in those goals. Sure. And it's a little overwhelming at first when you get all this attention because you want to respond to everyone, because it's all love, it's all good, you know, but you just got to worry about your goals first, because if you do that right, the attention is going to keep coming, the fans are going to keep coming, the respect is going to keep coming. If you mess around and get lost and get sidetracked, you could end up not capitalizing on the whole thing and being in some trouble. Right. So just any question you have, say, wait a minute, I need to be clear on this for good. You know, here's what I want, here's what I do, and that's what I do first. And I don't spend five hours a day responding, I spend one. And on that one hour, I target these responses or these people. And I'm telling you, man, it's one of the things I wish they taught in school. I wish, you know what I mean? It's like how to properly set those goals and ignore everything else. Right. So important. Yeah. I guess just like personally for you, what is, so with Clarity, like what are you clear on now? Where are you heading? What I'm super clear on where I'm heading is like my goals. I know exactly how many downloads I want to have on my podcast by December of this year. Gotcha. I know how many YouTube subscribers and video views. Sure. I know how much um, e-commerce revenue on Young and Reckless. I know how much profit on Young and Reckless uh, per year. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that I want to take my mom and dad on a vacation to the beach by December. You know, like I literally said, what's important to me? Well, my business is important to me, my friendships, my family, right? So let me make, what makes me, if my family is important to me, how can I sort of quantify being a good son? Well, making sure that I call or text my mom every single day and making sure, you know what, it's her dream because we used to go to Myrtle Beach every year. It's her dream to just go to the beach with us again. And we haven't done it in 10 years, 15 years. So let me do that by December of whatever. Um, Company's doing well, we're growing, here's what we did last year, here's what I wanna do in profit. I don't care about revenue, right? This is the number that really matters. Um, Retail's dying, e-com's the new thing. So I don't have retail in my goal list. I have e-com in in my goal list. Mm -hmm. Uh, Podcast is going great, but if I'm ambitious, what am I hitting? So every morning, I literally recorded that into one of my podcast microphones. I put it on an MP3 on my iPhone, Mm -hmm. and every morning when I get in my car to drive to work, before I allow myself to listen to music or a podcast or anything, I play a recording of myself saying my goals Mm -hmm. for the year um, through my speakers. And that way I'm so clear when I'm walking into the office, when I'm going throughout the rest of my day, 
what my targets are and anything else is kind of a waste of time. Right. You know? That's cool. Unless something else emerges and, you know, over time something else could kind of come up and you could be like, oh, well, that could be cool. That could be one of my goals. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. But really, like, for instance, I'll give you a wild example. Like, I met with a guy today uh, that wants to try to do a TV show for, like, uh, anywhere from, like, big TV to Hulu to Netflix to whatever. Sure. To be honest with you, even though it sounds super cool, TV's dying also. Mm -hmm. The only reason that I am aggressively meeting is because it fits my goals of my podcast listens, my YouTube subscribers, my YouTube downloads. It, and that's what I see as long-term success for me. Right. You know, I, one of my goals is not to have 10 TV shows. But those things will definitely feed back to my bigger goals. And so I'm clear, like, yes, this is worth meeting and this is worth aggressively trying to pursue. Right. If somebody came in and said, hey, we want you to do a satellite radio show, I, I don't know, it doesn't, you know what I mean? Sure. So that's what I would, the day that I really got that clarity on who I even am, what I want, realized that I couldn't do everything. I used to just think, oh, whatever, any opportunity, I'll crush it. Right. You know, but it's, you can't. And it's crazy to think that you could. And so getting clear on what's important to you um, what you consider a success, and then how to get there, it just makes life so much easier, right. you know? Mm -hmm. So I would strongly suggest, uh, I, I would, this is what I would do, I would write out uh, a checklist of what you should do every day to have a basic uh, successful day, like mm -hmm. respond to messages, meet one new person, blah, 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 and then check it off every day. Right. I would do what are your goals for it's getting a little late in the year. I think it's safe to say, like, what are your goals for July 4th of 2019? Sure. And then what are your goals for, let's say, July 4th of 2023? Mm. Just so you have them. Right. Don't spend too much time looking at those ones. Look at the year goals. And then every day, just ask yourself, are you progressing towards those goals? And is your schedule fitting in with what your goals are? Mm -hmm. I think that alone will make such a difference. Right. You know? Yeah. That's cool. Anything we're missing? No, I think we're good. Perfect. Um, where do we find the page? Oh, it's Rob's 10K Friends on Instagram. That's really cool, man. Yeah. You're doing a really cool thing. And I think like the, the coolest thing to me is when, when they first told me about this, there's so much going on now, like in social media and content. Everyone has every idea already done. Right. But that's like such a cool, creative, mm -hmm. unique idea. And I don't know, it's just really, you should be really proud of it. Yeah. It's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. It's been fun. I think coming out here, especially to LA, I feel like I don't have competition. Not that it's a competition, yeah. but like I'm meeting everyone and anyone. Yeah. And as long as they're a person and it's one more towards the goal, yeah, it's that's like great. I attach my, my purpose and my fulfillment to hitting 10,000. Yeah. So it's so cool. Well, yeah. I'm very honored to be one of the 10,000. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you for doing this. Yeah, thank you for having me. You're the man. Yeah. Keep doing it, man. Yeah, take care. Yes, sir.